everyone, I'm Trusted44, and welcome to this Let's Play Blades of Avernum. Last episode, we made our way through Fort Alora. Finally managed to get through it. A couple, couple uh, difficult parts, but thankfully it wasn't that bad. Aside from one area where we had to deal with some creatures that were immune to being smacked, and we and were spread out enough that we'd only kill three of them with the unblockable damage. And now... <sighs> Now it's time to report in on what we've found, so let us go and do so. We also finally managed to get a lot of loot. You return to camp with news of the next stopping point for the expedition. As soon as you arrive, Cast gives the word for everyone to break camp and the whole area becomes bustling with activity. Everyone rushes around to disassemble the tents and the holding pens, and they load up the pack lizards with as much as a beast can carry. Most impressive of all, Talus gives a few orders, and the shrine breaks down into portable pieces. You return to your tent to rest briefly before you set out. Okay. After you rest, you pack up your tent, preparing to leave. Then, after a short time, you go, leading the expedition down the river to the peninsula that you found. Once you arrive, you pitch your own tent, but you have no opportunity to rest. Cass wants you to speak with him immediately. That must be the temple. Here's the boat. Okay, that's a way out. Yeah, that has to be the temple. Jess won't, may want me to speak with him immediately, but we have explorations and investigations to do. Plus, I wanted to get and figure out what all this loot is. ASAP. Preferably. Oh! Ithic! Ithic stands here, staring out at the waters, whispering soft lines of poetry to himself. Every now and then he takes out a book. It's the Calthanad, and refers to it. What are you doing? I'm memorizing a part of the Calthanad. Ithic replies. It comes from the part during which Kalthas is in mid-conversation with the goddess on the mountain. Sometimes when I worry or doubt about unknown goddess, I remember that Kalthas faced such anxiety as well, and he conquered it. The great ones of history overcome. I wonder if the Sliths of the Classical Age ever tried to figure out who Kalthas' goddess was. They must have. I bet they thought that it was Sultana, the queen of the gods. Or Alpha Nazaria, the goddess of the hunt. More likely Sultana, the more glorious of the two. He leaves unspoken the question of the identity of Laguerre's goddess. Well, nobody in that tent. Oh. That's Silthonk. Silthonk notes your approach. His expression is even more displeased than it has been before, and he offers only a grunt when you greet him. Can you identify my items? Because we have a few that need identifying. We've got a Blessed Halberd. That is actually something we can just sell. We've got better. This wand is a crystal wand. One to 12 to 120 points of damage, plus 1 to 10 points per level of bow skill, and 2 levels of dexterity. It's a throne missile. None of our characters use throne missiles. Interesting as it is, it's useless to us. We may as well sell it. And this hat is a hat of stability. 1 to 9 plus 15 points of damage prevented, 40% resistance to magic damage, and 1 action point or less. This spell shard is a shard of regeneration, plus 150 spell points when used. Give that to Draco. Don't think we have anything else. No, that should be it. Alright, so... The crystal wand is going to be sold. The hat of stability. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to give it to Bonnie. It's a much better protective spell, and that one only gives a little bit, so this one is a good choice, I think. You know what? Actually, I think... Yeah, you already got the plus one action points or less. Draco does not. He used to. 
but I don't think he has it anymore. No, you've got the armor of wisdom. You're good. Never mind. Bonnie, you can wear this. Alright. Now we have items to sell. Swords. Blessed halberd and the steel halberd. The emeralds and the ruby. You sell the steel halberds. Sell the crystal wand. I know, a lot of people are going to yell at me, Why are you doing that? Nobody can use it. It needs thrown, thrown weapons to use it, so sell it. And steel razor disc, and... Shard of regeneration will hold on to for now. Now, we can improve our spells a bit. Mage spells. Actually, hold on, can you teach me anything? I mean, I guess we can learn invulnerability potion. Nah. We need spells. Mage spells. What are we going to improve here? I want to improve arcane summon so I can see what we can get higher at a higher point. It could be something very good. And I'm going to... You know, what about priest spells? Is there anything in priest spells that we can improve? As healing's maxed. I don't really use any of these other spells. Yeah, I think it's going to be that. I think it is indeed going to be Arcane Summon. So many people don't like that I use it as much as I do, but it has had use. So, Arcane Summon. Bam. That's as high as it can go. Nothing that's our tent. So Silthok is, doesn't approve of us, it seems. Something's going on with him. He is not happy, and I don't know why. I mean, I can make guesses. But still. Okay, here's where the groups are. Ah! You approach Macron to talk to him, but he is too busy preparing the orb for one, uh, for one of his reports. Not now. Always happy to talk to an adventurer, but right now I'm busy. Alright, you know what? Let's... Let's go talk to Cass at once. She really wants to. Nobody else seems to want to talk to us. Let's do so. You approach Cass to speak to him. To him. Greetings! Good to see that you are awake. I have another mission for you. Near here, there is a beautifully wrought golden statue in the shape of a wolf nursing a baby. It will make the perfect centerpiece for the altar. Cast cuts off suddenly. Silthok has approached, and several others, including Ithic, are with him. You move off to the side, and Cast stands before him. Why would we need that? What are you doing, Cass? Why are you sending them on useless quests like these when we have a journey to make? We need to reach the homeland, not decorate your foolish shrine. Again, Silthok is challenging Cass's authority, and again you are put between the two. On the one hand, Silthok is right. A golden statue for the altar? This cannot possibly be required by the goddess. On the other, however, Cass is the spokesperson for Laguerre, and Laguerre is the unquestioned leader of this expedition. No one would be here if not for him. Arguing with Cass is tantamount to arguing with Laguerre which is all but sacrilege. I'm afraid I do have to agree. Our goal has been to reach the homeland, not to build this temple. If this temple must be built, and must have all these things, let Laguerre tell us himself, not you, Cass. Silthok is right. Let's stop this foolishness. We all agree, Cass. We must keep going, not search for trinkets. But the goddess commands this! Before Cass can even respond to you or Ithic, Silthok begins speaking again. The goddess commands this! The goddess! This charade must end! The goddess is false! Hey! No, yes, I agree! Blasphemy! The whole crowd erupts into shouting. Silthok has said the unthinkable. Unthinkable not because it is not true, but because it is too subversive and dangerous. You glance back and forth as the mob seems ready to riot. Listen! We have seen no miracles! Only magic tricks! What have we seen him do? 
He located Lost Basikava, opened the gates to the homeland, and parted the river when we were attacked. Ithik snorts and begins speaking. But he grew up in Upper Basikava. He knew where it was because his ancestors stayed there when all others left. That is no miracle. Nor do we know what he did for those twenty years in isolation in the tunnels under Basikava. He could have wandered through ancient Basikava and found the route to the homeland. From there he could have opened the doors. Talus speaks now, his voice calmer than the others, with not condemnation but fact. The parting of the river showed magical power, but it didn't have to be divine. Erika had that kind of power when she was alive, and she had no blessing from a deity. We have seen no miracles, only magic tricks. The gear may not even be a prophet. The goddess may not even exist. As they speak, you remember suddenly the words of Casper. A strange slith passed through ancient Vasikava and did not come back. Laguerre must have gone through ancient Vasikava, but he came back to Avernum by some other path. Perhaps he even passed through st the steel doors, unlocking them from the other side. Silthok could be right. Suddenly Pythos's voice rings out from the east. He has emerged from his tent. Cass, what are you doing? You have not received permission from Laguerre to give these quests. You are usurping his authority! Cass recoils with anger. The Prophet would want me to do this, Cass says confidently. Should we bother him with every mundane detail in the day-to-day -day running of the expedition? He has higher matters to attend to. Even if that were true, are you honestly acting for the greater glory of the Goddess? I don't think she would approve the, of this idolatry continues, laying the pronouncement in soft, sibilant tones. I think you are acting for yourself and your own glory. I agree. It was I who built this temple, Cass, not the goddess. Cass opens his mouth to shout, to condemn this heresy and damn all the ones who have participated in it, but you can see several in the distance who are nodding. Many have lost faith, or perhaps they never had it. Before Cass can speak, though, Pythos cuts him off. We must not fight. Let us consult Laguerre. Yes, the Prophet will know what to do. Cass stresses those words, contrasting with Pythos, omitting the title. Despite the acrimony, you walk with them as they go to Laguerre. But when you arrive at his room, it is empty. There is a note. Pythos reads it aloud. The lack of faith among the members of this expedition makes me fear for our safety. We are all in the Goddess's hands. The exodus can only occur by her grace. Pythos's claws tremble as he reads the next section. I have gone to higher ground upon which to pray for guidance. If you have true faith, brave the dangers of the mountain to reach me. The goddess be with you always, whatever your decision. We must think on this. Pythos turns to you. Forget about fetching items for the shrine. Rest now and then come speak to me. I need some time to figure out what we will do. You return to your tent to sleep. You sleep for a short time, but for longer you lie awake, thinking. You have journeyed a great distance, across the ruins of a great slith empire, from Vasculus to Naktha to Thasca to the lava ocean to the strange cave with what is it food. Some questions have been answered, such as the identity of the father of Phaedra's child, but you cannot help but realize that more pressing ones yet remain. Is the goddess real? If so, who is she? And why is she helping the expedition? You cannot help but believe that the crystal pillars you have found everywhere are connected with this somehow, and that the slith legends you have heard are also a piece of the puzzle. The demons. The Calthanad. The truth is there somewhere. You have hardly spoken to Laguerre on this expedition. He has been hidden away, praying, or something. Perhaps if you could only be alone with him, you could ask him for answers, finally. Regardless, now it is time to speak with to Pythos and find out what your next task is. Oh boy. That is very concerning. A schism is forming, and... All honestly, all honesty in all this, I'm siding with Pythos. The goal here is to make it to the homeland. That has been the purpose. Not this... temple. Making a small shrine that you could take with you. I can understand that. That is part of why you're going here. But making this massive temple and getting all these things. Hell, 
A wolf nursing a child? What does that have to do with the goddess? What does it have to do with anything? It would be a perfect thing for the shrine? Why? Because it is a gold statue? The golden rod that they asked us to get? The two trees, even! I don't see the point of all this. And I do have to agree. Cass says the Prophet would want this, but do we know that? If this is what the Prophet would want, what I say is let the Prophet tell us himself. But the Prophet is gone. And things are getting even more stressed. Regardless of whether the Goddess is real or not, this is more important. Trying to figure out what we're supposed to do next. And I stand with we should be moving onwards. We should not be building this temple that should have all these things in it. There is no point. We can come back at some later point to get all these things for this temple if you really must. Getting back to the homeland is the most important thing right here. <sighs> okay. I just, I don't see the purpose of the temple. There is no reason for it. Silthark stands silently, waiting for your next question. What do you think of Laguerre's departure? He shakes his head. I am not happy that he left, but I won't lie. I don't believe that the goddess is real. I have seen nothing that would make me believe it. Bring him back. We need him to finish this journey. I shall do so. There's Pythos. We'll speak with him last. Let's speak with everyone else first. Macron is speaking into the orb of communication. The expedition is at an impasse, and we are in danger of losing everything. Our leader, the Gare, has abandoned us because of our lack of faith and we cannot continue. Is the goddess real? Only the Gare knows, if, he, if even he does, but certainly none of the rest of us do. We have never seen her, and we do not know if the miracles that we have seen are genuine. All we have is faith, and even that is in short supply. The mood of the expedition is grim, as if some brooding gloom were hanging over the trip. It has been the Gare's drive, the Gare's ambition, the Gare's need to go where we are going. It has been our guiding for that has been our guiding force. Although many of us doubt the goddess, none of us doubt the Gare, and I suspect that most of us would be willing to accept the goddess if doing so would bring back our leader. After all, Silthok was wrong about Phaedra. He could be wrong about the goddess, too. Nevertheless, all we can do is hope that the Gare comes back soon. Agreed. If Ass looks less comfortable than you've seen her before, if you read her face correctly, she has tear streaks from recent crying still on her cheeks, and her eyes are drawn and tired. Something is on her mind. What's wrong? Nothing, Ifas says, looking away. She will say nothing more about it. What are you doing? I've been taking care of Phaedra, and sometimes helping with other things that need doing. Like most of the people here, I just go wherever Cass or Pivas tells me. Phaedra sits in her chair, smiling as always, with her baby in her lap. Her good cheer is a stark contrast with just about everyone else in the expedition at this point. How are you and the baby? Both well. I'm still not recovered enough to do much work, but I haven't felt anything wrong with me yet. Arcadia seems to be doing fine, too. She cries a healthy amount, which is good. Or so I'm told. <laughs> what do you think about Laguerre's departure? Phaedra's smile vanishes for a brief moment for her hesitantly returning. He... he'll be back. He has wanted this for too long to give it up now. He's just being dramatic. He'll come back and all will be forgiven. At least I hope so. Indeed. The door is locked firmly and will not open. Cass paces uncomfortably near the entrance to the temple. He hardly even glances at you as you approach, looking upset. Where is Laguerre? He has... sought higher ground. That must mean that he journeyed up the mountain to the west. More than that, we do not know, but Pythos can tell you what you need to do. What should I do now? Go to Pythos for that information. He... he is the one who has decided our course of action. Cass shakes his head doubtfully. 
feel like Ithic. Okay, nothing more from Ithic. What about Talus? Where did Talus go? Talus didn't need to get out. Talus must be here somewhere. The hell did Talus go? Sliths don't show emotion as much as humans do, but Pythos looks exhausted. The great warrior still carries a spear on his back and still stands taller than nearly any other slith, but he moves slower than he did at the start of the journey. You are here. Good. I must tell you where to go now. What do you think about Laguerre's departure? Pythos is visibly disturbed by the events of a short time ago. It is not good for the expedition. Even those who don't believe that the goddess is real are sure that Laguerre is our leader and is good for this expedition. His expression is grim but determined. We must do everything in our power to bring him back. What should I do now? Laguerre sought higher ground. We think that means he climbed the mountain to the west. Cass has attempted to scry, but it is blocked to his sight somehow. Great magic is at work there. We need you to climb the mountain and bring Laguerre back. No one else here can do it. Phaedra is still regaining her strength. Talus, Ithic, and Silthok lack faith. Cass has not the physical might, and I do not possess magic. Cass and I would not be able to work together adequately either. So you must go and bring him back to us. I do not know what you will find on the mountain. Be prepared for anything. Understood. I still want to know where Talus is. I want to speak with him about all this. I'm gonna walk out again, see if... Maybe Talus was in the temple and I didn't see him. I mean, there's Cass. I just don't see Talus anywhere. He seems to have vanished. And again, that's probably... Also, that's... Pr now that I think about it, that's probably the dramatic moment that I was told about that could have led to uh, a game-breaking bug or something. So I guess we're good. Alright then. We have looked around. There's still some other points. Okay, it wasn't there. Said the mountain to the west. Which means it's this. Well, you know what? This episode's gonna be a bit shorter, and I'm gonna end this episode here. We'll make our way through the mountain in the next episode. Oh boy. I don't know what we're gonna find, and I hope we get some answers. But that'll be in the next episode, so until then, I'm Trusic44, that is Fox, Sheik, Bonnie, and Draco. This has been a Blades of Avernum Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.